All right, friends, this is day four, and today we are in all of chapter three. And I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but what I want to point out to you today is a question that is implicit underneath chapter three, and really the rest of Luke also, that we don't see that everybody back in the day would have seen. The question is, where does Jesus fit in? Who is Jesus? This is a question that we ask today. You know, we make all kinds of assumptions about who people are based on maybe one thing that they do. For example, over the last two years, if you're walking through Tom Thumb, you feel like you know something about someone based on whether they're wearing a mask or not. I mean, most of us think based on whether they're wearing a mask or not, we know all kinds of things about them, including their voting history. What we are always doing is trying to put people in boxes. And the world, of course, is trying to put us in boxes. They're doing the same thing for Jesus. You know, broadly speaking, there were four kinds of Jews at the time. If you've been doing the Bible studies for a while, then you, you know this. There have been four, four kinds of Jews. There were the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Essenes, and the Zealots. And here in chapter 3, we definitely meet one of these groups, and I think we meet another one also. There in verse 2, During the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. Ananias and Caiaphas, the high priest, are Sadducees. Who are the Sadducees? They are the elites of the Jewish community. They're wealthy and they're powerful. They're in line with Rome and they are incredibly corrupt. I mean, when you think about priests at the time of Jesus and particularly Sadducees, think less about priests today and think more about the mob. I mean, it was like a criminal organization. I cannot highlight for us enough just how corrupt this group of people where it points to why Jesus was so critical of them. So we've got that group. Then we've also got here is we've got, well, John, the son of Zechariah. Zechariah was himself a priest. So was he a Sadducee? Well, we know that he wasn't. How do we know that? Well, because in verse in chapter one, it says that he was righteous. I mean, to be a righteous priest, we, this would blow right over us. Would have been an oxymoron at the time of Jesus because most of the priests were so corrupt. So, Here's what we don't know, but what many people suspect, and I think is probably true. It's possible, it may even be likely, that Zechariah and Elizabeth were not satisfied seeing their son grow up in Jerusalem around all of these Sadducees, the people they were often around, and instead sent him to be raised in another community. The Essenes, who lived out by the Dead Sea, some of them likely lived in Jerusalem, who had removed themselves from society to practice a more, uh, more pure form of of their religion, eagerly awaiting God's return and praying daily for the Messiah. So John likely grew up in that community and then left it to begin the work that we read about in chapter three. So you've got them, you've got the Pharisees. We'll talk about them at another time. You've got the Zealots. The Zealots are violent. They're seeking a, a violent revolution to overthrow the Romans. And likely what many, many people were trying to figure out is, Jesus, where do you fit? It would be like if a new popular politician came on the stage today and everybody's trying to figure out, okay, are they a Republican or are they a Democrat? Or it could be that even a new politician arises within one of those camps, and those camps are so divided today, they're trying to figure out, okay, what kind of Democrat, what kind of Republican is this person? And Jesus persistently does not fit into the mold. He doesn't fall into the mold of any of those four things. I think there are many of us today that are saying, I don't know that I fit in the mold. I believe this about this platform and this about this platform. I'm not trying to play the game, the red and the blue game. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to be faithful. Those of us that are trying to be faithful to the way of Jesus, I'm just trying to be faithful to what the scripture teaches and to, 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 to everything that I can understand about what it looks like to walk in the way of Jesus. And if you are faithful in that way, you, like Jesus, will not fall into any particular camp. And if you are faithful in that way and you don't fall into any particular camp, then you, like Jesus, will end up taking flack from all of the camps. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Well, we got a lot more chapters to discover that. But at the end of chapter 3, Luke gives us a little bit of a hint. Who is Jesus? Look at the genealogy of Jesus through Joseph. Who is Jesus? And then you track all of that genealogy down and you see that it goes through David. Who is Jesus? He has royal blood in him from the line of David. And who is Jesus? You track it all the way down. Jesus is the Son of God. And he is the Son of God in the way that we are, that we are descendants. We are descendants from, from, from the beginning of humanity. 
But he's a son of God in a way that you and I are also. And Luke is already beginning to show us echoes of that. That he has that royal, like the, that, that, that royalty in him from the line of David. He's being raised in Joseph's house, so he's a part of that family. But there's also something inside of him that, 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 that people don't see yet, but they will. That he is the very incarnation of God. That he is God himself. Who is Jesus? He is nothing that the world has yet seen. Who is he in our lives today? He doesn't fit into any of these molds. But he is someone to know, to grow closer to, to be surprised by, to be molded by, to be shaped by. He's the son of God. So God, guys, keep, keep reading. Keep sticking with this. And we're going to continue to discover more and more about who this man is. God bless you, friends. And I'll see you next time.